No, no listen, listen, what I'm saying. But what about taking the money? You come to work every day. I didn't take it. Stop. Don't say business and you don't know what you're talking about. I ain't take no money from Def Jam. What you talking about? What I mean, take, I mean, they cut you a check. No, they didn't cut me a check. We had a formula based on performance. And they calculated and we got paid. Um, okay, so you said on the record that until blacks stop using the N-word, we can't get mad at anyone else for using the N-word. So how else do you blame black people for the racism that we face in this country? I would like to say that I said that a while ago. Nothing I say is concrete. I'm very fluid in my thought oh, process, Oh, how convenient. By the way. All right, because I know it was an ambush. You got off your own block. I don't know what them guys had planned. You got so of, I had to get out the way. You got ran off your own block, man. So good, though. It happens. It, it happens just, to the best of us. Sometimes. Man. Why we got an issue, bro? Because you brought... The Breakfast Club is one of the leading hip-hop radio shows and podcasts that people watch for one-on-one -on -one rapper interviews, gossip, and news. There have been a lot of guests in the history of the show that weren't having any part of his BS and check Charlemagne for his antics. Birdman. First up on the list is one of the most viewed and most infamous interviews that The Breakfast Club has ever had. Birdman. He not only called out Charlemagne for his behavior, but all three of the show's hosts. Yes, sir. I want to start this shit off straight telling all three of y'all stop playing with my name. Morning, everybody. It's DJ MV Angela Yee, Charlamagne the Guy. We are the Breakfast Club. We got a special guest in the building. He done cursed us out. Tell him, tell him, get it off your chest, Bird Man. Say it already. Because I, I, I don't understand the angle. Like, what? Like, what? Said it already. So why I come here? I did it already. I'm here. So what's happening? I mean, it's all good. But I'm, I'm saying, here. why, why, why? And I'm here. What's happening? I'm all good, but I'm well, saying, why say come that, here man. just Look, to I'm curse here. us What's up? What's happening, man? I wanted to see you. I wanted to talk to you on your man and your face. Absolutely. You understand me? I knew a few places you was at. I could have pulled up, but I don't think that was gangster. I wanted to come look you in your face like a man and tell you how I feel. Okay. You understand me? Straight up like a man. So no what's the issue? No sugar. Ain't no issue. If it was an issue, you, you'll feel me. I just come to let y'all know, stop put some respect on my name. You understand me? When y'all saying my name, put some respect on it. Did you, did you pull up on Ross that way or Trick Daddy? Man, I'm pulling up on you. Yeah, but I'm, I'm the radio guy. Why well, pull up on the radio guy? Don't act tough with the radio guy. I hate Y'all y'all finished or y'all done? I ain't got no more talking. Let's rock. All right. All right. Monique. Now, what's going on today, Miss Monique? Well, baby, you know, a while ago I had to come out and I spoke in reference to Netflix. Mm -hmm. That we had to boy, you know, I was asking folks to stand with us as we boycott Netflix for gender bias and color bias. Correct. And we were fighting for equality. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that I had become donkey of the day. Yes. Mm -hmm. By Leonard. And I got to call you by your name, baby, because... Leonard. Leonard. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay, baby. He's getting real special, Leonard. But we're going... Okay, no, it, Leonard. It is Leonard. It is Leonard. And then I was called donkey of the day, and it really caught me off guard. Mm -hmm. How'd you give a donkey today, Charlamagne? Well, I think it was due to Leonard. the whole Netflix situation. You know, when I heard you say that, um, you know, you wanted us to boycott because of racial and gender bias, but then you went on to you know, mention two brothers and a woman. So I said maybe she should be more specific and say black woman gender bias. But then also just from a business aspect, I wanted to know why did you feel like, you know, you should have gotten whatever Chris Rock got, whatever Dave Chappelle got, or whatever Amy Schumer got. I'm, I'm sorry, go ahead. No, I want you to go well, ahead. Well, for, I don't think Amy Schumer is funny. That's number one. But mm -hmm. she did sell out 50 arenas around the world, mm -hmm. including MSG and HBO wanted her as well. So she created a bidding war based on those stats. So I assume that's the reason her number was at that place. Well, I want to address something because you said, I assume. And then you also said in be the beginning when you start talking, you said, Monique is a legend. That's what you said. Absolutely. Right? When I came to the table and I said, guys, and I said it humbly, I'm the most decorated comedian alive. And I said that humbly. Mm -hmm. And then people, some people said, oh, Monique is crazy till it was proven. Till everybody actually saw the numbers and said, well, I guess she's right about that. And when you say this is a what have you done for me lately, the question is how much more do I have to do, brother? When you're basing off of what you're assuming, and then you give me a title of donkey of the day, is your mother still alive? Yes, ma'am. And you're from what city in South Carolina? Monk's Corner, South Carolina. Monk's Corner. And if I was to call your mother or your grandmother, could they tell me stories of inequality that they had to deal with? Absolutely. So would your mother be a donkey? No. Would your grandmother be a donkey? No. I need you to explain 
how you gave me the title because you're not explaining it. You're going off of what I assume, but because you're on that microphone, and when we open up these microphones, we know just how powerful our voices can be, don't we, Angela? Yes, we do. And we know that what we say can become law, correct, Lenar? Absolutely. So when we do that, we must then explain it to our community because we know how poisonous it can be when we put things out, but we can't back it up. We just say it. See, we made history. And I don't know if you've done your homework because we were the only female group, black, white, Latin, Asian, to sell out consecutively around this country. Mm -hmm. But you'll disregard that because you'll say, well, what did you do yesterday? See, you can't take it away. And you say, I'm why, gonna why did you say that? But you I'm say 10 years ago, I'm I gonna hugged tell you, you, I held the door for I'm you. I'm going to tell you Don't why. Don't you think that's contradictory? I'm, I'm going to tell you why I said it. Because what happens is, when you leave a place called Monk, Monk's Monk Corner, Monk's Corner yes. South Carolina, and you come to a big city named New York, and then you change your name to Shalomon I was Shalomon in Monk's Corner, Miss Monique. Well, when you were there, you become Shalomon the God. Now, I don't know if you took the same principles that your mama and your grandmama gave you in Monk's Corner and you brought it to Manhattan, New York, because the brother I did meet on that elevator, I met a brother that was full of principle. Thank you for having us. Why do you keep thinking them? They're not me. You know what, brother? You're going to hear yourself a lot from me lately. You're going to hear yourself around the world because we have to explain brothers like you. We right. do. And when we watched that movie, Birth of a Nation, and we saw that man walk his wife into that master's house, we watched him walk his wife in. Then we watched him go back and get him. You're that brother. I thank y'all for y'all time, you. my babies. Thank you. Nicki Minaj. In 2012, Nicki Minaj released her Pink Friday, Roman Reloaded album, which also coincided with the release of her perfume line. The album was making waves and becoming a household staple for lovers of Nicki. She got on The Breakfast Club to discuss the new album, and what should have been a marketing opportunity turned into a lecture. It turned out that Charlemagne and DJ Envy had not cued the songs from the album properly. Me too. <laughs> Shut up. It's The Breakfast Club. And what music are you playing? Oh, don't cut this off. This, see, this is the part I love. See, this is the, this is the part I love. Right. Let's see what how much juice you got, you got, son. When we come back, we gonna, we got pencil bills. We gonna play high school. We, when we come back, we, we not only gonna play high school though. Okay. And y'all, y'all, that's what I don't like about y'all, New York people. No. There you go. Z Rod stuff that only no. that got a big name on it. This is what and I love. Other great records on it. So let's go. They were playing the songs at random, which wasn't making Nicki Minaj happy, as there was a way the song should have been arranged based on what people listen to the most. Y'all need to start trying to break records and start and start listening to Ooh. people's music. <laughs> what? I mean, that's the DJ. That's the DJ's job. What, 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 this is a continuation of what I was saying to Clue last night. And Clue, I know you ain't even up yet. You lazy. Bye. Mm. All right. When we come back, we're gonna get a Nicki Minaj record <laughs> on this. She said so. That's why. And you I, ain't got the heart. I, I bet you, you I ain't gonna do it. I bet you I do. Do okay. what? Well, Nikki, what you want to hear when we come back, Nikki? Why Why y'all don't have the songs queued up, though? Which would what, what, we got to play hear high, first? Okay, but I want to hear High School. I want to hear Hell Yeah. I want to hear I'm Legit. I want to hear um, Up in Love Flames. It. That's only Queens right but there. The, you don't even know these songs. You guys do not cl clearly don't support me. Neither does Clue, but that's neither here nor there. But those are the songs that I would like mm. y'all to play. Nicki Minaj called out Charlemagne and DJ Envy, claiming they don't support her, which is why they didn't have her songs ready to go. Charlemagne tried to defend the situation by claiming they had the album, but it didn't change the fact that they hadn't cued the songs. DJ. Coming, I don't understand why I'm coming to radio and, and y'all don't even have my songs ready to be picked. Wait, 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 hold on. That's the DJ. Look at Envy when you say all that. Envy actually has the clean Roman reloaded re-up out. Thank you. He Good, does then have let's it. start. Let's, we let's will. go. We, we let's gotta pay bills when we come back. Let's do it. Well, that's the come. main focus. And, and we have those records. Yes. That's the main focus of the kid coming to the radio. Now. When a, when the kid comes to the radio, now. the kid comes to here. Post Malone. Post Malone, born Austin Richard Post, is an American rapper, singer, and songwriter known for his unique blend of hip-hop, rock, and pop music. When Post was still getting his feet into the entertainment industry, he was invited to The Breakfast Club. The interview was an amazing opportunity for the 20-year-old Malone to get his name out there. But for Charlemagne, it was an opportunity for him to try and discredit the young buck. State your name, soldier. Post, Post Malone. Malone. Post Malone. One of my young boys, uh, Relly on Smash, put me on to your record. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, White Iverson. Yeah. I played it on my uh, TV show, Uncommon Sense. How'd it go? So, and, I'm, and I'm glad that you're tall. 
Okay. Because you do a lot of basketball references. So I was saying, I hope right. that he's tall, and I hope that he, at one point in his life, played basketball. Well, I love, I love to play basketball. You I'm not very play. I'm not very good, but I love to play. Oh, so you didn't ever play professionally? For <laughs> no, 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 no. I hit a whole Post Malone yeah. thing, you know, posting you up in the paint. Right. Carl Malone. Well, Post is my last name. Oh. Yeah, and I just made Malone up. But really? you know, his dad you actually <laughs> used to work for the organization. What was he? Waterboy? He does. He still works for what the organization. He He's like head of concessions. So he, <laughs> <laughs> I said, I said, Waterboy. That's like kind of no. He he like he, 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 he in the office. Man. He's, in the office. He's, in the He's in the office. He's in the office. Yeah. So so we get you know we get free tickets. We get free chicken strips. Hot dogs. It's good. Life is good. So he owns the concession stand. No, he's, he's just, just like he's the head manager. So now, you got to pay for this interview, right? So, you know, you might want to slide me some of those tickets. Now, why did your dad buy you rap of all things? I don't know. You know, you know, uh, my dad always put me on every type of music. You know, my dad put me on rock, you know, country, every type of which way rap. Um, I just think that, like, he he raised me to appreciate music. So, I mean, I really loved that record whenever it came out. I yeah. just love the beat. And, I, you know, I did the feedback for my mom and all that shit. Let me see. Let me see if you can do it. Lean back. Lean back. Hey. Hey, you got the cholo. Hey, what are y'all doing? Say my niggas don't dance. Hey. Just pull a set. Go ahead. And do the rock away. No, say the, my, what I just said. My niggas don't can't. dance. <laughs> <laughs> y'all trying to get me in trouble. Now, you are a Caucasian rapper. You are a white yeah, rapper. Yeah, yeah, Is he? Yeah. Are you white? Yeah. Okay, just making sure. Yeah. You, know, you could be Puerto Rican, transracial. We don't know. Tra white guy who identifies as black. It could be you. Maybe. I identify with people. Good answer. I just make the music that I like. And I don't even classify myself to be a rapper. I classify myself to be, you know, more of an artist, you know, because I I'm not just rapping. Like, you know, on a new album, I play guitar and and I do rock stuff, and it's just it's just it's different. I heard wow. that you are, you are you afraid as a white rapper that you may uh, be considered a culture vulture? I don't think so. I'm not scared. I'm not scared because I'm not trying to be anybody that I'm not. True indeed. I'm just, I'm just trying to, you know, I like what I like, and, and and I don't think I'm biting off of a certain culture or copying a certain culture or trying to be part of a certain culture because, you know, I like what I like. They get mad because I got uh, gold teeth or whatever. I, I like the way that it looks, you know. It's not, I'm not trying to bite off anybody or anything. I'm just trying to, I like it. Right. A year and a half ago when I got my first braids, we were... Um, cornrows. So, yeah, some lady did them, yeah. FYI, I think all white people with cornrows look stupid. But that has nothing to do with, <laughs> no, nothing cool. to do with you. I just think in general. Yeah. 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 But I think black people with blonde wigs and blue eye contacts look stupid too. But you gotta have what are you doing for the Black Lives Matter movement? <laughs> what? I don't know. Is that a serious question? Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. If anything. I feel like, you know, and, and that's funny too, actually, that you brought that up. Because I have a song called Too Young. Okay. And you know in Dallas, um, a kid named Christian Taylor got shot and killed. And and you know a week before that happened, you know he tweeted the lyrics to my song, which was like it was like prophetic. What was the lyrics? I don't want to die too young. Wow. And that's crazy that he was listening to my song, you know, and he tweeted it, and it, it happened, you know. It's 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 wild, and I don't know what the. I don't what does that have to do with Black Lives Matter? Nothing. I'm just saying that that that's a that's an instance of like that, you know. Um, oh, he got killed by police. Yeah. Got you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, I don't know. I just think it's cool. And then people, you know, the news seen it, and every, and everybody seen it. So I don't know. I mean, I guess I guess what I can do to help Black Lives Matter is I to keep making music. You know, what I mean, I don't know. Got you. I don't. I don't know. I would have just said I, nothing. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> honestly, I, just, I mean, I just, I would have just been like nothing, you know, at the moment. You know, I'm trying to learn. You, you got a girlfriend, don't you? Yeah, yeah, she's, she's right, right there. What? Right. Ashlyn right here. Yes, yeah, she's right Oh, there. hey, Ashlyn. How are you? You know he's going to end up leaving you, right? The most oh, famous don't say that. That's not true. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you, know, you know the most successful you get, you're going, you know. Is that, know. Is that a fair of yours, Ashlyn? Kind of. Put her on the mic. Now, this is a good conversation. Go I like this. Come, come, no, come, come, come on, Ashley. Come on, Ashley. Come You know he's going to sleep with other women, though. You do know that. You're, are, you, are you aware of that? He's going to what? He's going to sleep with other women. No, I'm not. No, I'm you not. Try, you're trying to give me in trouble. No, we had Diddy up here the other day, and Diddy talked about the 75%, 25% rule. 75% of the time, you're going to be a great boyfriend, loving, caring, be mm -hmm. there for her. But the other 25%, you're going to have your dick in the dirt. I'm a good boy. 
I'm not. I'm now, not. If he I don't, I don't live by Diddy's rules. Cheats, I'm a good boy. If he cheats one time on you, do you give him a chance one time? Or you do have you, to. He's a rapper. Yeah. You have to. You give him one chance. I don't know. More than one. He's a rapper. He's gonna make mistakes. He's an artist. Yeah, I'm an artist. worse. He's only 20 years old. He's got a hot record. It's only going to get bigger. He just signed. It's going to happen. But Charlamagne actually. is saying okay. not only is he going to get urban Punani, it's going to be folk, country, yes. pop, yes. urban AC. Yes. A man is only as faithful PM. as his options. You know that, right? You know that? What? A man is only as faithful as his options. Not a lot of options, you know, when you're just a struggling guy in Dallas. But now that you're a popping rapper traveling the world. No, I'm a good boy, man. I, I'm not listening to y'all. <laughs> because I'm, I'm, y'all. A, I'm a good boy. Post, I got I got so much willpower. Post, I got so me. much willpower. Listen to me. I'm telling yeah. you what I know. You're a young man. Trust me. I'm, I applaud you for trying to do the right thing. Oh, I'm going to keep doing it. But it's it. not going to finish that way. And when it, when it happens, <laughs> I want Maybe you to come will. back up here and shake my hand and say, Charlamagne, you know what? You was absolutely right, man. Ashlyn, am- Ashlyn will shake your hand. That Ashlyn, this is what y'all should do. Threesomes. A lot of couples is working for it's a lot. It's working for a lot of couples. Like, that way, you can basically see who he brings right. in, and you can make sure you manage the whole situation. It's like being a promoter, it, like it, you are. And you keep promoting, and, and you keep him out of the trouble. situation. You keep him out of trouble because you don't want him to end up catching no rape charge or get no girl pregnant, catch a STD. So if you're picking the girls, you're like, no, she's a good one. We can do this together. Have you ever thought about that? No, not mm. Two on one. Man, y'all leave her alone. <laughs> Two, you don't want to bother her in the game. Two on one, Ashlyn, okay? Okay. Were Trust you me. there at Kylie Jenner's party? Yes. Oh, you were there. Okay, good. So you don't be one of those, though. Don't be one of those that comes everywhere. Post, <laughs> nah. you, you're not going to post, 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 post. Listen to me. Let me structure this for you. Oh my you're God. not going to want her everywhere. Eventually, you want your boys everywhere. are going to get tired of it. Your boys will be like, yo, does she have to come everywhere? You don't want her everywhere. Trust me, it's early. I'm the singer. you still in the I'm honey- the singer. I'll do whatever you I want. You might want her there everywhere. <laughs> you're still listen, in the listen, honey- listen, 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 listen. Here's something y'all don't get. I'm not a, I'm not a normal person. What does that mean, Post? I'm a weirdo. I'm a, no, I'm a different type of man, and she's not a normal woman. What does that mean, Ashley? She's a, she's an angel. She's an incredible person, and I don't think I'm ever gonna do nothing to ruin it. Well, we really don't have nothing else to talk to you <laughs> yeah, about really because, really. Um, you know, you got one record that we know of. Yeah, Mike Robinson. But you're a nice guy. You can get on the SoundCloud. Thank you. You're you know, a nice guy. We appreciate you joining us, man. No, I appreciate yeah, y'all. We're just gonna keep watching this whole situation, see how it plays out. Yeah. You know, just trying to prepare you for what's to come. Well, thank you. I appreciate you. It's going to be a lot of white privilege questions that you're going to get. No, yeah, yeah. They're going to be like, oh, you only got signed because you're white. That's coming. I'm an industry plant. You are? Yeah. An industry plant? Yeah. What's that mean? I don't know. That's what they call me. Listen, go with it. (laughs) Yeah, for real. That's what I said. You don't know what it means. (laughs) Listen to what I'm telling you. When they say that you're only here because of white privilege, you're like, probably, but I make good music. I don't know. That's why. I don't 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 know know nothing. That's it. My boy Wax always says that I don't know nothing. It's like, I don't know. It's a good answer for everything. Yeah, that's a good one. All right. Well, Kanye West. Next on this list is Kanye West, a man that has never been afraid to stand his ground. In a 2013 interview with The Breakfast Club, Kanye West was talking about his ideas to shape the music industry and some sort of racism that he had experienced. You know, when I wanted to get my deal, it was A&Rs that don't work there no more telling me how I needed to work with another rapper or how I wasn't a rapper and blah, blah. And now it's people that's at the corporations. They got the ability and the facilities that if I put my genius to it, that I can affect culture in a higher way the way I affected people when I made them Louis. Right. And I affected people when I made them Yeezy. So I ain't going at Nike as a corporation. I'm going at the people that's running the corporation. And I'm saying, I'm going to hit you in the chest until you listen to me. Because you feel like you ain't got to take no meeting with me. So I'm going to turn up and I'm going to let you, sh- I'm going to show you what we are. We World War Z. We're going to run over that mountain until you listen to me. Because I'm influential. <clears throat> the reason why I'm influential, same reason why you want me to come to your show or you want me to wear your product is the same reason why you got to involve me and you got to cut me in. You know what I'm saying? People got fat without me. You cut me in because people be having negotiating when I was negotiating with Nike they said okay cool Kanye you been screaming up and down we gonna give you a deal for Yeezy finally because they was marginalizing me let me only design two shoes over a five year period people talking about the Red October that's the design for three years ago you know how many ideas I got you know say so they try to marginalize me and then they say look we gonna give you four million dollars a year to design this I said what about royalties they said look you know you 
you're not a professional athlete, so you don't get no royalties. I said, look, man, I go, I go to any of these arenas and play one on nobody. I'm a performance athlete, and more than being an <laughs> athlete, I'm, 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 I'm Walt. I'm like Howard Hughes. I'm like David Stern. I'm like Steve Jobs. If anything, that's a compliment to them. I'm like Michelangelo because I'm the new version of that. And anybody that backs me is going to be the Medici family that back Michelangelo at this point. You know what I'm saying? So when they told me I couldn't get no royalties, it's like, wait a second, you want me to work for Nike for two more years? I can't. What I tell my daughter in two years that I've been working trying to make Nike still hot and I still ain't, ain't don't have, you know, the backing to really support and protect her because she in a position of a level of royalty like like. Uh, the prince and the princes out in London but they got more paper they got heritage me and Kim we on our grind we had to do what we had to do to get to this point to be able to support our family but we ain't there yet we ain't financially there to the point to make sure that North is safe at all times and that's the reason I'm Kanye West was talking about a basic concept that any black person would understand but Charlemagne seemed to need more explanation Charlemagne went on to call out Ye by claiming he saw him as a revolutionary but all Kanye talked about now was money Obviously, Kanye's major point, which was systemic racism, flew over Charlemagne's head. But of course, Kanye had an answer for the radio host's claim of being a sellout. Like Steve. Why do you talk yeah. so much about money nowadays, man? I used to look at you as like a real revolutionary. You know, real revolutionaries didn't need money to change the world. Malcolm X wasn't rich. Martin Luther King Jr. wasn't rich. Like, I don't understand why everything is so much about money and, and stuff to you now. Because you need product. You need to own something to have a voice at this point. Because I'm telling you... You already got on. You don't need to own something to have a voice. Yeah, you had a voice. When you got on stage and you then said, George Bush don't care about black people, you was using your voice. You don't need money I to have a voice. I could use my voice, but what happened if y'all don't buy no other albums? Then that, that voice, people going to say, oh, he like Arsenio Hall, and he was turning up too much, and now you fired. But when you got money, can't nobody fire you. No. Kanye was not far from the truth because without money, there are some spaces you can't enter. Since that interview aired in 2013, Kanye has gone on to own and run a billion-dollar company. Soldier Boy. During a Breakfast Club episode in 2022, Charlemagne decided to ruffle Soldier Boy's feathers by claiming the rapper wasn't born in Atlanta, but on the internet. Dude, I think of the internet. I'm dead serious. Bow Wow's the one in South Atlanta. Was... In my mind, Soldier Boy was born online. No. That's in well, my mind. don't get him started again because he definitely. Charlemagne's remark only meant one thing, which was Soldier Boy didn't have a life nor career outside the internet. It wasn't really a dig at Soldier Boy's childhood, but at his life. Soldier Boy was obviously not having it, so he went off on Charlemagne via Instagram Live. You're mad because I'm trending every day. Let me train in peace. Know what I'm saying? Let me have my fun. Let me go viral in peace. Stop speaking. Don't, don't talk about where I'm from, bro. You don't know nothing about me, bro. Was you there when I was growing up? Did you grow up with me? No. Stop getting me mad, bro. Leave me. Stop getting me out my character, bro. Stop getting me out my element, bro. Let me make my music and do my dances. And do that. I ain't on nothing with nothing bad. No, with nobody. But when you get to speaking on my name, I'm addressing every. Start capping. I get mad because y'all be capping. You want me to come up to the breakfast club? Cool, I'll be there. You know it's our love. It's love. I love Charlemagne. Don't get it twisted. It ain't no smoke. It ain't nothing like that. I love Charlemagne. I love Angela. I love DJ Envy. Envy, Envy I salute you, Envy, because you the one who said Soldier Boy need to be on the Mount Rushmore. Y'all know what I did for hip hop. I don't know why they play on my name. I got more money than all of them. Although Soldier Boy claimed to have love for Charlemagne and the rest of the Breakfast Club crew, it didn't stop him from expressing his anger. Charlemagne hasn't gotten wiser after that incident and still tried to trigger Soldier Boy again by claiming Drake was the world's biggest rapper. But he had no big comeback. And look how, and look how he yo, crossed, look how he crossed yo, over. Yo, Meek Mill ain't beef with Chris Brown and was finna box with Floyd Mayweather. He would be yo. with Drake, the biggest rapper in the world. <laughs> Drake? <laughs> Drake? Yo, stop playing with me. Where? It's grassy. Stop playing me like I ain't teach Drake everything he know. Hold on, you taught Drake everything he know. Y'all ain't hear Drake on with his first song. Tell me what's really going on. Drizzy Drake back in this thing already. What's that? That's oh, Soldier. Don't do that. My blown. Wow. Don't oh. do that. Soldier Boy may be reaching by claiming he made Drake, but Charlemagne definitely knew what he was up to when he brought up the conversation. Master P. Years ago, when Master P and Mercedes started releasing songs, Master P appeared on The Breakfast Club to promote their music, but Charlemagne began to show his controversial antics. He made a comment about Mercedes' appearance on the cover of the album, Rear End, which had her bent over the hood of a classic car. 
Charlemagne said that everyone was releasing music around that time except Mercedes, but also threw in a quick, she has a fat ass though, which was a terrible comment to make because he was sexualizing her live on air. Master P had to put him in his place. See that she had a fat ass. Yeah, yeah see that, bro. Hold wait. up, man. Don't, don't, don't talk about Mercedes. Oh, like bad. Now, like... Let's go back to this, dog. Wait, 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 let's, let's, let's respect because I'm not going to talk about your sister, your mama. No. Got you. You know, we need to, you know what I'm saying? Like, that's the first thing because I, I know you do your radio thing and I respect that, but at the same time, Mercedes is a she a female. Oh she my fault. Yeah, you, you you're right. right. But she did look good on that cover though. Yeah, she looked good. That's yeah. that's your opinion. But you know. Master P was right to call out the radio host, as this will empower more to step up and create respect in the culture. It's like whatever I said about you, I'm gonna say to you, and I'm gonna continue to say it to you regardless but just of how mad you, you get. Say something doesn't make it the truth. That's true. It's just my opinion. She's just saying that because I said her, I told her she was whack rapping one time. Yeah. That's all. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 it's deeper than rap. That's all. Like I, <laughs> just come out of nowhere. I told uh, her. It's, I'm just saying though, you can have opinions. It doesn't mean they're right though. Uh -oh, uh -oh. Beef, what was this? She's right. She is uh -oh. right though. It's just my opinion. Yeah, uh -oh. we're so, all entitled to opinions. Uh -oh. That's all. Have y'all ever heard her rap? Okay, good for the people that said no. Well, no. Hold on, let's just get to Lil Wayne, who co-signed Drake and Nicki Minaj, is the same person who co-signed me. I've won a BET award with Young Money. I got songs with French Montana, YG, Ty Dolla Sign, Snoop Dogg. Mind you, I did a, mind you, hold up, hold up, hold up, mind you, I did a song with Snoop Dogg after getting into a verbal argument with him because he respected me so much after I spoke my mind to him, he still came back and did a song Why with me. Why are you talking with your hands, though? You don't know my musical track record, bro. You don't, don't know my musical track language. record. Sorry. Okay. I can't be funny today because he doesn't know my mother musical track record. So get from me here. Beanie Siegel. Next up is Beanie Siegel, who instilled fear in Charlemagne and also showed us a petty side of the radio host. Beanie Siegel had beef with the game around 2017, and it got worse after they worked together on a track with Meek Mill. Beans addressed the beef on a podcast, and Charlemagne thought it was an opportunity for him to poke at the rapper. Beanie Siegel then decided to remind Charlemagne of the time he made Lil Mama cry with his questionable interview methods. Because people look at you like, I don't know if I can trust me. How? How you can't trust me? Because it seems like you just flip. How you can't trust me? I'm a man about my Like, it's hard to trust somebody. Like I said, you, you know, I know I keep going back to this, but it's true. You was in the studio with me eight days prior. Did we, did we did not just answer that? But you knew he wasn't real. You said he wasn't. You didn't think he was real when you was in the studio with him. All right, put it like this. It's Kanye a street? Absolutely not. Huh? Absolutely. But when Kanye put that phone call in, you know the stories. Who was there? And he ain't a street. But he part of he part of that thing of ours. Mm -hmm. So I took penitentiary chances. I could have got booked out this month. He put the call and I was dead. Strapped tooth to nail. Ready to bust ass about the Cause he a part of our family. You understand what I'm saying? Now for no, people that don't know. Don't. You know how you don't understand? Because you know why? Because you not from that cloth. Mama, that's cool. I don't get it. You though. not. That's why you don't understand that. Kanye not a street nigga. I know that. If you, that's like the There's average between saying somebody's not a street nigga saying somebody's not real and a sucker. That's the difference. There's a difference between being street and real. Kanye when real, you portray Kanye yourself, who he is. when you portray yourself to be a certain way and that's not what you is. In music, that wouldn't have came out unless the conversations didn't have transpired. The world ain't know that. Well, it's, you know, it was holes being poked through your reputation mm -hmm. at the time. But what I'm saying, it, it didn't matter. I'm a rock for you regardless. But when you portray yourself in a certain light, like you won't go all the way right there and you don't, I got to draw back. So understand that. Like, it don't matter if a person where well, he could be a square, but that's my man. That square, that's my man. And we play video games because that's what he do. And I, I, I want to come in. I chill with him. If he got a problem here, tone cold, stone cold square, this ain't your feel, young man. I got that. That's what men do. Man. I'm just the type of, if I don't like somebody, I don't pretend to. Like, that's just my Because you, you, you're a character. That's why. It's the truth, though. You're a character. Time too, life's too short to be wasting your time with suckers or people you think is suckers. You're a, so why I'm here, then? Because I think you're a sucker. So I should be out, right? Yeah, I guess. Yeah, I wouldn't. I mean, that's me personally.
I wouldn't sit there and have a conversation with a sucker. Yeah, you'll sit here and you'll bash the, a little girl, a little mama till she cry. That's what you do. Coward. Well, we talk, me and you talking to each other now. I tell you yeah. that I think, I think you're a hypocrite. You can think what you want. And I think you'd be coming off as, as a hater sometimes. Right. You can think what you want to think. So now, what, what's, what's next? With, with I can say, I say, I think you're a bitch. You let Fred Joe Starr and them check you, but you made a little girl cry. They make her cry. But that's you did. Good. That's you did. Little Mama. Since Beans brought it up in the last segment, let's get into what Charlemagne did to this young female rapper. He started off by complimenting her confidence, then goes on to tell her that she comes off cocky for somebody that hasn't achieved a lot in the music industry. Charlemagne seemed to be on an ego trip with how he was happily listing everything he had achieved from a 33 year old man at the time to a 22 year old girl that seemed like bragging. Charlemagne then went on to make a silly comparison between Lil Mama and Nicki Minaj. As if that wasn't enough, he went on to say Lil Mama needs to release more music and stop thriving on old glory. He also brought up the time Lil Mama crashed Jay-Z and Alicia Keys moment on the stage and said that's all she's known for. It seemed like Charlemagne wanted to humble Lil Mama throughout the entire interview because he didn't even let her shine when talking about her record with Snoop Dogg. Lil Mama then broke down when she was badgered with questions about releasing a new album. She released her first album when her mother was dying of cancer and now people like Charlemagne just want to piss on her parade and make her feel like she's not trying hard enough. Charlemagne thought he had gotten through to Lil Mama because of her breakdown, but she reminded him that his advice is irrelevant. If he's not showing up to support young black artists, Charlemagne seems to be having too much fun talking down on people who accept to be on his platform and he forgets that they're human. Lil Mama may not have been getting buzz in positive ways, but at least she stood her ground and was proud of who she is and where she came from. July 31st goes to Lenard McKelvey, a.k.a. Charlemagne the God. Mm. Why am I giving myself donkey of the day today? Because I was wrong in my prediction for the Earl Spence versus Terrence Crawford fight. Now, I know you're wondering, why would you give yourself donkey of the day for making a wrong sports prediction? It happens. Well, it's because I looked that man Terrence Crawford in his eyes and told him he was going to lose several times. I have been saying for years that Earl Spence was going to beat Bud, and Terrence himself did not forget that uh, when he was here. When was that? Last month? Yes. Let's listen. Not even gonna lie, man. We be having the barbershop arguments, man. I'm like, yo, T Terrence Crawford is a beast. But I think Earl might get him, man. It's like, just gotta just be, keep it 100 with you and tell you. I think Earl might get you, man. What's the last that's, event? What's the last event? This is Earl Spence we talking about. This is, this ain't no just. This is the guy that you had picked over. I did, you know? I did. He I picked, got, he picked yeah. him over. I, did, I, I remember, I, I remember. Earl. Remember. I, got, I remember. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I don't. I don't forget. I got Earl. But 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 wanted to sit there. He deserved. But wanted to sit in your seat. But wanted to sit in your seat. And he said, he just, "If you want him to move, hey, you gotta make him hey, move." No, I apologize. He said, "Apologize." The wrong sports and, and say, and say you a loser. <laughs> <laughs> say it all. Listen, I I, I don't know if an apology is necessary, but I was dead wrong. Mm. Say you sorry. For being for, dead wrong. <laughs> I apologize. Okay. I apologize for picking Earl Spence over you. Dame Dash. Dame Dash's 2015 Breakfast Club interview was treated as a TED Talk by some viewers. But for Charlemagne, it was yet another opportunity to bring a successful person down. Dame Dash was talking about the importance of investing and how working under somebody isn't always ideal. And Charlemagne and DJ Envy seemed to take offense to that. Why are you offended? I'm not offended. I don't know. I, I, I Why is the snapping? Thing. No, wait, 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 wait. There's there's no, no, no. It's about we have no, we have a different taste level. I, we have different. You different like opinions. a boss? I don't. It's not a matter about having a boss. You yes, it is. In my matter, it is. It doesn't matter to you. In me, it does. Because I have enough investment. I don't. I don't investment. You don't own nothing. You don't own nothing. Investment. You sound smart to somebody dumb. You know what I'm saying? You got a boss. You sound You have a boss. What are y'all arguing about? Give me a favor because though. You talk and you In the mix of this know. conversation, you do your don't tell me I sound stupid you because now you The interview takes an even bigger turn as Dame continues to lay into the entire team for their positions of employment. With heavy shots fired, the entire Breakfast Club crew tries to defend themselves. It seems like Dame is just being a dick at this point. But at the end of the day, most of the guests that come on the show are subjected to the same disrespect. According to Charlemagne, some of the staff said Dame Dash shouldn't be on the show because he's hard to work with. And then when Dame asked to drop their names, he wouldn't say anything. 
Like, how do you feel? Let me ask that... you a question. How do you feel about the fact God that you sell gossip for a living? <laughs> like you sell gossip. You a man. How do men sell gossip? Sell That's for gossip, women. Man. Maybe you don't talk about. Though, y'all talk about what more. other people say. Every day y'all talking about what you heard. A, that, that's if, gossip. If that's all you to, that's women show, do that, man. That's what women do. I don't listen to your show. Well, I don't want well, to hear about gossip. I be sleep. I'm a boss. I wake up when about. I want. I don't be up that early. I mean, I think I think there's a variety. I come home that late. What there's a variety about? of things that we talk about on the it's show. Not, yeah. A man that gossips to me don't have nuts. But that that means he has a vagina. It's not gossip though, because I'm telling you what they said. Tell me who said it. That's not that's irrelevant. Nah, then you and see where I'm from. You don't do that. If you want to deliver a message, nah, I don't want to hear that. It's you lying. <laughs> you lying Call out a name Or you lying Call out a name Be a man And call out a name Or you gossiping Or you chatty right, patty I'm gossiping then. I'm chatty patty I'm chatty patty so No chatty I'm patty questions for me man. <laughs> Ask me a real question man. Don't movie, tell me what somebody Larry Elder Larry Elder Was a presidential candidate When he accepted An invitation To share his plan For America On The Breakfast Club Charlemagne assumed he was talking to a random person and really tried to get the best of him. When Larry Elder shared his plan to amplify the voices of black people and help improve the community, Charlemagne started riddling him with questions and really tried to make him look stupid. He also had his co-host and another guest teaming up with him. So this quickly became a three versus one debate. We're still living below the poverty line. You're picking and choosing, saying this was good, but this was bad. Okay. The bottom line, they end between the poverty line. But let's move forward. Well, on well let me, can, can I just yeah. add, can I just address that? In 1940, 87% sure. of blacks lived under the poverty line. 1960, mm -hmm. that number had fallen to 47%. That's a 40-point drop in 20 years. That's the greatest 20-year period of economic expansion for black people in the history of America. Again, well before Brown versus Board of Education, well before the KKK uh, uh, imploded, uh, well before we had race-based preferences. Why? Because it was rare for a black kid to be raised in a, in a family without a father in the home. Of course, Larry Elder had a response for everything, which just fueled Charlemagne to keep badgering him. Charlemagne was in over his head and had to resort to his computer and pre-written questions and answers his team supplied him. You think members of your party are leaning toward fascism? <laughs> define fascism. Authoritarianism. The, define fascism. I mean, the rejection of democracy, the rule of law, and equal rights under the law in favor of a, a strong man, Donald Trump, who interprets the popular will. As a person objectively who doesn't care about either party, when I just take a step back and I just look at what everything that's happening, I see one party that seems still committed to democracy somewhat, and one party who's headed fast towards fascism. That's just my personal opinion. So who do you think I would vote for? Well, who well, vote, well, let's let's, let's talk let's talk about fascism since I, I assume you're talking about uh, election denying. Uh, in 2000 when George W. Bush won the election over Al Gore, uh, the Democrats the first week of of January 2001 tried to overturn the results in Florida. Uh, 2004, George W. Bush gets reelected. Uh, Democrats, including uh, Benny Thompson, the chair of the uh, January 6th committee, Jamie Raskin, a member of the January 6th committee, joined with 28 other House uh, Democrats and Senator Barbara Boxer to overturn the re results in Ohio, claiming without any evidence that Debo voting machine had been hacked. Uh, 2016, January 20, uh, January 2017, Democrats challenged more states. Uh, trying to get the election overturned that elected Donald Trump. Then Donald Trump challenged uh, the first week of January in 2021. Nobody accused them of undermining our republic. Nobody accused them of being fascist. They exercised whatever means they could to try to win the election. I want to remind you that Hillary Clinton advised Joe Biden during the 2020 election, if it is a close election, quote, do not concede under any circumstances, close quote. Donald Trump used whatever legal means he could, advancing some novel legal theories to try to uh, stay in office, and he failed. 6 9. Next up is 6 9, even though it wasn't exactly a check, but more of a clarification. When 6 9 was 18, he was involved in a sex scandal involving a 14 year old girl. Charlemagne, of all people, brought it up on 6 9's interview with The Breakfast Club three years after the incident. He asked if 6 9 was a registered sex offender, knowing fully well that he wasn't. Are you a registered sex offender? Nah, I'm not. Um, but you convicted of sex offender? Like, nah, I'm not. You could actually look it up. You got a computer right there. Yeah, I did. I, 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 that's why, that's why I asked. I mean, you, can't be, you can't believe nothing you see on the internet. That's we why got, I'm we got, you. So I got, somebody sent a letter up here, actually, mm -hmm. about you, right? With yeah. charges against you. And I guess it was something with you were 18 years old. Yeah. And the now, girl, look at this, right? You... Yo, right? Uh, if, if 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 I came, all right. So so, look at it like this. How old are you? Like forty? Almost, almost, almost forty. Forty. Yeah. Look at it like this, right? <laughs> say 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 two two years ago, or three years ago, right? Say three years ago. 
I'm 21 now. Mm-hmm. It three years ago, right? I I come out. I like you know what I'm saying. I had a underage girl in the video, right? Um, and you know, happens. You know what I'm saying. You know, girls lie about ages. Everyone knows this, right? She was 14. A lot of people get caught up in this, right? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now I, I I come out with this. I, I I get in trouble for this firm, right? I I'm totally remorseful for the situation, and it happens, right? Charlemagne knew what he was doing by poking Takashi like that. He knew people were on Takashi's neck for that issue, and he was playing into it. It was evident that he wanted to frustrate 6ix9ine into hearing a story that was non-existent, but the entertainer didn't fall into the trap. Now, say, no, no. Yeah, tell him what happened. I'm going to say, but say he comes out, right, with the same charge, right, at the age of him. Into the mic. Right at, mm-hmm. the, at at the age he's at right now. This is how nasty the media is. This is how nasty. This how nasty. The media tries to paint a picture and and violate. This is what the this the the system does to to youth. Right. Mm-hmm. This is what the system does. Now I'm a, I'm 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 a, I'm an 18 year old kid, right? With my life in front of me. Of course, like, if I didn't rap and I didn't, none of this mattered, but now that I do rap and I'm actually, like, somebody, when these charges come up, it's like, oh, my God, he's a monster. You know what I'm saying? But paint it to where the people don't see, like, yo, the kid was, the kid is a kid, like, you know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, and he got caught up in some... When people comment under my shit, pedophile and all that, you know what I'm saying? I, I'm so numb to it. Right? Because I know what I am and I know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Now, say if if I won't understand if I was his age, you know what I'm saying? And I, I caught that charge and, and and it would look it would look disturbing. Like, you know what I'm saying? It would be like, what the f-? But I think the media don't see it like, yo, this kid is it got caught up in some sh-. You know what I'm saying? Like, I don't like bringing other artists' business to the sh- you know what I'm saying to relate to myself, but how many people out there get caught in some sh- a girl lie about her age? There was no sexual intercourse between me and and the female at all. It was just I got arrested for being in the situation. Did you plead guilty? You plead guilty, right? I plead guilty like this quick, blood. Why? I was scared, blood. I didn't have no money. I was poor. Like this was mm-hmm. three. I wasn't rapping. Like I was. I wasn't. I wasn't mm-hmm. on some like hot. Sh- mm-hmm. It was like, yo, you know, this girl was missing and 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 she's this age and she's in foster care and 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 her family's trying to find her. When I'm hearing this, my heart is sinking to my stomach and I'm like, my, my girl was pregnant at the time. And I'm like, and they was like talking 15 years. They was talking mad shit. Blood, I didn't have no money for a fuck, uh, uh, an attorney. I didn't have nothing. I was scared, blood. I was like... I was like, yo, I'm taking the trial. I'm fighting it. They said, yo, if you blow trial, it's... 15 years. So no, more, was, blood. Like, she, was I dancing was like, in a, she was dancing on video or something? Yeah, she, it was just like, yo, I don't know if you ever saw a video of me back in the day when I when like I pedigreed this girl. Like, you never seen that shit? Like, I did this wrestling move on this girl. Mm-hmm. Fredro Star. You don't play me like that, nigga. I don't know what you want me to do. You you Fred Rose Starr, whose real name is Fred Lee Scruggs Jr., is an American rapper and actor best known for his role as a member of the hardcore hip-hop group Onyx. During an interview with the rapper, Charlemagne brought up the topic of Fredro hooking up with Brandy, which set him off. Back and forth continued and things got heated fast. Without any warning, Fredro Starr began to violently press Charlemagne. Hey, this, nah, this, this, I, I, this your radio station. You know why? This your block, nigga. Why? Right, Cause I know it was an ambush. You got ran off your own I don't block. know what them guys had planned, so I had to get out the way. You got ran off your own block, man. So good, though. It happens. You know, it happens just, to the best of them. Get pussy sometimes. Man. Why we got an issue, bro? Because you bought some that I ain't like, and it's, and it's and I don't like that. I ain't no bitch ass. I ain't say you was, but you don't say. play me like that. I don't know what you want me to do. You, you, you can't do? do nothing, nigga. You can't do nothing. That's what I'm saying. Nigga. You can't do nothing, big man. You it's can't do good. nothing. Nigga. I know it's so. I play am for that. Playing the garbage. Don't play me. My name is Fredro Star. Do your Googles. Let's keep trying to do this. Nelly. 
Some people blow up on Charlemagne like Birdman, and others have a subtle approach. Nelly is one of the guests who calmly put Charlemagne in his place. So much so, anyone could have missed it. During the interview, Nelly was asked about his love life, and he didn't really want to go into details. Then Envy brought up a line in one of Nelly's songs and asked if it was referring to an altercation with Irv Gotti. Of course, Charlemagne throws in a weird little comment. <laughs> <laughs> now, and here I come, the, the record with Rick Ross she did a while ago. Yeah. There was a line on there that it seemed like at the time, I guess you and Irv Gotti were going through a little problems. Was that line going at Irv? And your man is a, your ex man is a chump. And I tell him, da, 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 da. I'm not a rapper, so I don't know. That's what happened. That was a good rap. No, you know, I ain't, I ain't never had no problem with Irv, man. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Uh, Irv ain't never saw me and said nothing out the ordinary or side of the neck or nothing like that. You know what I'm saying? We always say what's up and keep it moving. Never no pound and then whisper in the air, you got a good girl. Yeah. <laughs> nah. I, 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 I don't think he's stupid. That, you know what I'm saying? So. I mean, I don't know, champ. You know, if, if it's something you're trying to get to, just get to it. You know, it's like I said, we retain us, bro. Just say what you mean. Mean what you say. No, I don't want to. I don't, okay. I don't know. I was just on World Star last week. I got yeah, you. Yeah, I don't want no problem. I what Nelly likely meant by the retainers line was that he had thugs and lawyers ready to defend him if anything ever went down. It was more like a quick warning to Charlemagne that if he keeps trying to sneakily get words out of his mouth, Nelly's ready to slide on someone with no issues. After that remark, Charlemagne stayed humble to the end of the interview. The, 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 the country has never fulfilled its promises of freedom, liberty, and justice for all. It's always been freedom, liberty, and justice for some. And usually that some is uh, white people. So here's what I would say in response to that. That is obviously true that the nation has fallen short of our promise since our founding. But walk through some obvious facts about America. We're not founded on an ethnicity or a monarch or a food or even a religion. We're founded on a set of ideals that brought a group of people together in 1776, and we live by those ideals. At least we aspire to those ideals today. A nation that aspires to ideals that's not made up of gods, but made up of human beings, will always fall short of those ideals. So I think our worst hypocrisies as a country, and we have many of them, our worst hypocrisies are our best evidence that we have ideals at all. You take a look at other countries, nobody ever calls the Chinese Communist Party a hypocrite or China a hypocrite or Iran a hypocrite. Why is that? Because to be a hypocrite, <laughs> you at least had to have ideals in the first place. But a lot and of and so we're imperfect, but we are about the pursuit of a more perfect union, the pursuit of happiness. So America's about the pursuit. And so I, I think are the trashing all, ourselves, I, I think we are actually. The reason I say that is because you know, we, we never were included in those ideals originally. Like, originally, yeah. but never and not originally are two different things. Mm -hmm. Originally, that's true. Mm -hmm. Over 250 years of progress. If you had somebody who was in 1870 looking at the world we live in today, if you had somebody in 1960 who was looking at the world we live in today as it relates to race in America, we would be darn close to what they would have thought of as the promised land. So I think we have to recognize that America is about that pursuit. We're a lot further along than we were 250 years ago. We, and here's the other thing, too. We got to set our expectations. We will always fall short of our ideals. By definition, if there are human beings and not gods living in a nation that aspires to ideals, we are fallen. Man is fallen. That's what makes us who we are. But what also makes us different from animals is that we have ideals. So America's founded on our humanity, that we can believe and aspire to something that we will still fall short of. That's what makes this country beautiful. And that's why... It, 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 that's why I'm in this. You ask me why am I in this? I care about reviving pride in that nation because if we get in the habit of just bashing that country, what are we bashing? We're bashing the last best hope that man has for aspiring to those ideals. Tell me who else has done better. I'll wait. Uh, Charlemagne tried to play a victim card. We can't deny that racism exists in America and black people are denied opportunities and access based on their skin color in the 21st century. However, Charlemagne is always creating these parallels about race that make the fight of black people for centuries seem like a joke. I'm not. He was an abolitionist in his own time. He was the second president of the United States. He did not own slaves on principle. Not only that, he actually fought for the liberation of slaves. And just like that, we have finished our list of interviews where guests have stood their ground and checked Charlemagne for his antics. Beyond the drama and confrontations, the show continues to be a platform many people turn to for candid interviews and news in the world of rap and hip hop. And the show's success is undeniable. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the like button and share it with your friends. 
If you are hungry for more, check out these other videos popping up on the screen right now. And make sure to subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications so you know when we drop new content. Thanks for watching, y'all. And we will see you in the next one.